Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Update Thanksgiving D Day. Coping with North Carolina. Advice. Check my post history for details, but here's where I stand, two months from D-Day, remorseful WS, but still TT every few weeks. We have both agreed a period of North Carolina is best. We even started filling out divorce paperwork last night and plan on getting it notarized tomorrow and North Carolina will follow after everything is signed. I told her if there was ever a future here, it would be months down the road, but it is unlikely. It would be a separate marriage because she broke the vows of our first. I said I needed time to heal and love myself again and she needed to prove this change is permanent with time and therapy. We've spent much of this last week together, knowing North Carolina is coming. I see so many posts of narcissistic cheaters and it's hard to find much advice here on these unicorns where the remorse and effort to fix things is real. I mourn the death of our marriage. Knowing she is at fault doesn't really make it any easier. I have severe codependency issues because she's been here for every struggle. I recognize North Carolina is necessary, but I'm terrified of it. Knowing I have to find the strength to say no to the comforts she offers while I face the hardest moments of my life, alone. Of course I have friends and family, but as most of you know, this is a wow and only we can heal. My self-esteem is shattered. Here's where I want some advice. It seems stupid, but I don't know what to do with the North Carolina time. I don't want to sit and wallow. I want to stay productive, meet new people, try new things, and learn to be independent and love myself again. The problem is, f***ing COVID. I can't find a single social event to attend or a hobby to pick up. I spend my days at home with my kids and reading self-help books, journaling, a big help. BTW, and feeling unmotivated to do anything. So much of my self-esteem came from being a father and husband that I never even thought of what I wanted to do, for me, outside of those roles. She didn't hold me back, I just didn't want anything else. Now I sit dumbfounded, with few friends, no hobbies, and starting from scratch with a gaping hole in my chest. I'm just wondering what you all did in those first few weeks of North Carolina to cope. What are the do's and don'ts that you experienced? How long before you started to feel whole slash happy again? I know it's a battle of inches, but damn. It's unbearable some days. Also, I think I already know everyone's answer here, but as things get to a better place, have any of you successfully had a friends with benefits thing afterwards? Or is it too impossible to detach the emotional needs from physical wants? Be gentle, lol. Thanksgiving D-Day Update, 3 Months Update First off, thank you all for the support these last 3 months. They've been the hardest of my life. Check my post history for the full story, but TLDR, I found out on Thanksgiving my wife had three affairs this last year, one EA, one partial PA, and one full-blown PA. I don't have a specific point to make or question this go around. I just wanted to get some stuff out and update for those who PM'd asking for one. Where I'm at, I'm going to individual therapy one to two times a week. Equally therapeutic, I hit the gym about 4 to 5 days a week and finally like what I see in the mirror, at least, physically. I've been prescribed Prozac and Buspirone, anxiety med, and I'm about 2 weeks into it. As typical for those who first start these meds, symptoms felt even worse a few days, but hopefully I'll start to see positive changes soon. I've been reading and practicing meditation, specifically Zen Buddhism, in an attempt to do for my mind what the gym has done for my body. A Redditor once described this whole experience to me as a battle of inches. I've really felt that the last three months. It feels for every 10 I force myself to put into recovery, a one is returned. Depression hits hard most days and, much like a friend who had one too many drinks, I often feel like I'm dragging my dead weight through all the things that are supposed to be good for me. 
I guess if there's one thing I learned in recovery, is that motivation comes after action, not before. I never have a good day maybe a few good moments, but I admit they're more frequent than before. Meditation has helped me not focus on the past and future, but it damn sure takes a lot of effort and I often fail, resulting in a negative feedback loop of painful images and hopelessness. An update to the relationship with Mai, I don't even know what to call her anymore, she stays about 4 days a week on most of the nights I don't have my oldest daughter. We don't fight anymore. There's pain, my god, is there pain, but I can control the anger, now. I still haven't made a decision to leave or stay and I'm not ready to, just yet. I just embrace a sense of normalcy that was stolen as best I can. She doesn't trickle truth, anymore. She goes to therapy, too. She was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and actively doing workbooks, applying therapy to our time together and her own life. She's agreed to sign anything in the divorce paperwork, should it come to that. I feel a genuine remorse, not just regret, from her these days, that I often doubted in the beginning. Having said that, don't believe me blind to the situation I'm in, I've done a lot of reflecting. I know our marriage would always wear this scar, should I stay. I know the urn of trust in our relationship has been shattered and will never be the same. I've been around the community enough to know the response to what I say next, but it's important I do because of what I intend to say after, I don't think she'd cheat again. She's genuinely hit rock bottom and she's reminded daily the reality of who she is and the consequences of her actions. Every night she stays in her tiny room away from me, every time I lose control and weep, every time a family member cold shoulders her or events arise and she can't attend. But to my point, I'm not hesitant to stay in this marriage because of fear of what it could be, I actually can see down that path with a bit of clarity. I hesitate because I fear I may never love her the way a husband should his wife, and I admit we didn't share that love before this. I honestly believe our marriage would be better than it was before all of this, in every aspect except the most important, trust, which would take a long, long time. We're both making growth and change in ways we never did in our marriage. But, I fear I will never respect all of her with my whole being. Basically, I'm split between staying in what could potentially be a decent marriage and see my daughter seven days a week or roll the dice on an unknown future, but I don't bear this scar. Those who have read my previous posts know that I was recently diagnosed with adult high-functioning Asperger's. As a result, I tend to live more in my head and have difficulty keeping in touch with my feelings, hence the meditation. Looking at things from a rational standpoint, a big picture perspective, I will have two divorces, two kids, I'm 32 years old, and the idea of dating again seems a bit discouraging. I know now that I've never been truly happy alone and that this would be necessary to correct, should I choose to commit my life to someone else. I've always validated my self-esteem externally, through being a good partner and father. I need to learn to love myself before I can make a decision to be with my soul or another woman. I plan on taking a solo vacation next month. Something 4-5 to five days. Covid makes planning a bit difficult, but I'd appreciate some advice on places or activities you all have done to get to know yourself a bit better. If it helps, I live in central Florida and I'm a bit of a nerd, but I'm open to pretty much anything. Once again, thank you all for being an ear to vent and shoulder to lean on in these dark days and Godspeed on your recovery. Thanksgiving D-Day 9 month update update obligatory forgive the formatting, I'm in my cell in a hotel for work. First off, thank you all for the support and advice in what has been the hardest year of my life. TL, DR for those who don't know my story, I found out on Thanksgiving that my 33 meters, wife, 32F, had three affairs over the course of the previous year. I apologize for the long delay, but I just had to take a break from this sub a bit for my own mental well-being. Story after story of so many hurt people like myself just made it too hard to get on Reddit, between the empathy of their situation and constant reminder of my own. To the update. I have made progress and several mistakes on this road to recovery. On a positive note, I've been in therapy every week for the last 8 months, 
maintain hitting the gym 3 to 5 days a week, try to fit meditation into most days, and still spend most of my free time reading various philosophical books, mostly Eastern religions, and motivational podcasts slash lectures. As for my so, she still maintains the behavior of a unicorn. She's in therapy, patient and understanding of my space slash needs, and has taken on the near impossible task of making amends for the selfish person she was. I know reading stuff like that triggers many people in this sub, so I'll stick to my story for the rest of this post, but I felt it important for context. Since my last post several months ago, I have made the decision to leave, then caved into the comforts of familiarity with her, rinse and repeat a few times. I had a rebound hookup around me in a desperate attempt to change something in my life. While we were technically separated, we did agree to be honest if feelings towards another person started to form to spare a potential heartache as we were still occasionally spending nights together. She immediately forgave me and didn't care to hear any details. I honestly don't know why I felt the strong urge to sleep with someone else. Let it be known I had never had a one night stand in my life. I prefer intimacy and connection for sex. In this case, it didn't matter who. I knew there would be no second date. I just slept with the first attractive girl I could find. Whatever I hoped to get from it, I didn't get anything but regret. Fast forward to now, I'm finishing a two month project out of town that has me away from home four days a week, with the other three days being with my daughters. Typically, the night I came in, I would spend time with my WS as she was staying and watching my animals while I was gone. When this project is done, the intention is for her to move into a place of her own, she has been staying at my parents' house, and for us to finally take the real space that is needed, ideally September 1st she will move out. We've agreed to remain exclusive during the few months we will be separated, but keep contact only regarding our daughter. I will still have full transparency of her GPS, passwords to what little social media she still has, etc., but I intend to focus on myself and resist those temptations. Honestly, I'm as scared as I was 8 months ago to go through this healing process of separation. I've seen that life isn't so terrible alone and I'm proud of the changes I have made, but I came to understand my biggest fear is not loneliness, it's regretting the decision I ultimately make. I know most here learn the hard way that cheaters rarely change. I believe she wouldn't make that mistake again and feel free to flame me for that, but it's not the point. My fear is never being able to love or respect her the way a husband should if I stayed or, on the other hand, leaving and realizing too late I was chasing a fairy tale ending. That I had sacrificed half the time with my daughter and braved the unknown only to regret it. I guess even after all this self-growth, I still doubt I could ever really be happy alone. This long overdue time apart will hopefully bring clarity to those doubts. I know I have delayed the inevitable for so long and made this road to recovery unnecessarily painful. I'm a coward. That's really all it is. It's hard to ask for sympathy when so many of you didn't get a choice or your WS didn't have remorse and you battled your self-worth on your own. I know things could have been worse for me, but nonetheless I'm here hoping for some inspiring words that the other side isn't so bad. That one can come to a place of enjoying their own company and fulfillment in life without a so. That I won't regret making the biggest decision of my life, thus far. Thank you all and Godspeed on your own recovery. The Choice Seeking Advice Let me start by saying I'm new to this sub. I've spent most of my time on r slash surviving infidelity. Backstory, my so of 6 years had 3 affairs over the course of 2019 to 2020. Check my post history for a more detailed account. I found out on Thanksgiving day of last year that my wife was having an EA. Over the course of 2 months with a lot of pressure and detective work, I found out about 2 other PAs. Aside from the trickle truthing, my WW has done everything possible to make amends, weekly IC, transparency slash disabling social media, GPS tracking, and support of my decision to leave slash take space whenever needed. I've gone back and forth several times on what path to take forward. 
Every time I took a step closer to her, the pain and anxiety became too much. When I stepped away, I felt I was failing my daughter by not giving my last ounce of strength to try and, admittedly, I was scared of being alone. More accurately, the thought of entering the dating world, divorcing, facing the trauma alone, etc. was not appealing at all. So, we've lived in a state of limbo, spending a night or two a week together for comfort or playing house, but remaining separated from the outside world due to my shame and ultimately feeling like I could never fully try again. I came a long way this last year. I go to the gym three to five days a week, I go to IC every week, I spend most of my time reading self-help, psychological, and philosophical books or podcasts. I came to the realization it's not so much a fear of being alone anymore, but a fear of regretting whatever decision I make. In light of that, I recently decided that if I can't make a confident decision either way, I will make one to stay. Because, if I regret leaving I won't get the chance to try again, but if I give my everything to try to make it work and it doesn't, I still have the option to walk away, hopefully in confidence. Sometime in May, in a desperate attempt to fill my self-worth and find clarity, I had a revenge affair, we were technically separated, but promised exclusivity, which I broke. She forgave that immediately. She's forgiven all my mistakes during this time, bearing a guilt I could only imagine. I'm making this decision now because I'm actually at a point where I feel I'm just being unfair to her, despite her scarlet letter. I guess I'm here hoping for a different angle than the other subreddit. I want to see the other side of the fence, the one I have always been too scared to consider until now. I want to put both feet in this, but don't know what to expect. I don't quite have the anxiety that she'll cheat again, given her behavior and effort these last nine months, but I do fear settling. I fear I will never love or respect her again, despite now being better than she ever was. The resentment, pain, and trauma that accompanies the infidelity is always present. I expect it always will be, but will soften with time. If so, does it always feel like settling or have any of you come to a place of truly being satisfied with the decision you made with no regrets of what could have been, should you have chosen to leave? How long did you take to decide our over divorce? What was your deciding factor? Question. I recently joined the subreddit and have gone through a number of posts since and it seems I'm the minority here. I'm 9 months out from D-Day and just last week decided on putting both feet into reconciliation. Sure, I went back and forth and shared comforts along the way, but we have technically been separated since a few weeks after D-Day. Those who didn't take space afterwards, do you regret that or feel it helped having the WS support through recovery? Those who did North Carolina, do you feel it helped with your recovery and strengthened your relationship or do you feel like it was an unnecessary pain? How long after you started R did you actually feel the marriage was whole again, if ever? I spent so much time on R slash surviving infidelity and the only advice that isn't downvoted to oblivion is scorched earth, lawyer up, divorce. I've enjoyed the empathy this subreddit has offered and godspeed on your recovery. Despite what happens to the relationship, remember your self-worth comes first and to give yourself grace for what was taken from you. Thanksgiving D-Day Update, Divorced. Post, Separation. Feel free to read my post history, but the TLDR of it is that I, 34M, found out on Thanksgiving, 2020, my WS, 32F, of 6 years was having an affair. Through fanatical persistence, trickle-truthing, and sound advice of this sub, in the following months I discovered three total affairs had taken place over the course of about a year. I, or what was left of me, posted a few times along the way, but for my own mental well-being, I needed to step away from this sub. As I became obsessed with learning everything about infidelity, BPD, her diagnosis from independent therapy, and reading the horror stories only the survivors of infidelity can truly appreciate. This community has been a godsend in those darker hours, but choosing to incorporate a headspace that was already primarily occupied with the turn of events with even more painful information here left little room for anything else. 
Through on slash off separating and reconciliation over the course of roughly a year, I finally hit a breaking point in our couple's therapy session. What seemed so logically obvious for most of those months, I finally felt in my bones, I could never love who I now knew she was. I guess everyone grieves differently, one of the first things you'll learn here is the similarity between grief and infidelity, and I can admit that my grieving process was embarrassing and inconsistent. Don't get me wrong, I did the things and put in the work. I went to the gym 3 to 5 days a week, therapy 1 to 2 times a week, and filled all my spare time with self-help books and podcasts. But for all the growth and information I accumulated, I still couldn't overcome the fear of stepping into the unknown, alone, at the lowest point in my life. Until I did. It wasn't quite some magical epiphany or newfound confidence. Through the cripplingly slow recovery process and work put in through the year, the scales finally just tipped in my favor enough to make that leap. Then something I can't quite explain happened. As if I'd paid my last blood offering to the infidelity gods, it felt right this time. Echoes from the infuriating phrase my therapist sadistically repeated came to mind, trust the process. There are no shortcuts. After a year of trudging through the dark on blind faith that I wasn't some exception, I finally felt like I was going the right direction. In the hellscape of recovery, I'm sure many of us have felt like their situation is different. Either their partner is the elusive, see, imaginary, unicorn or that there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Of course we're all our own little special persons, but should you choose to cope through overindulgence of information, you'll see how disappointingly similar we are all hardwired. Take comfort in knowing your reaction to grief is natural, normal, and that just enough of the pain can be managed by practicing mindfulness of your thought processes. Most of the pain we experience is either reflecting on the past and anxiety of the future. While those intrusive thoughts do serve a purpose, practice recognizing when they spiral into unnecessary pain. Meditation helps, just don't expect it to immediately reap rewards. It's much more akin to going to the gym than the blissful experience it's commonly perceived to be. Anyway, here I am a year later. I stayed active in the gym, admittedly slacking on other self-care, dove into my work and became a little larger cog in the corporate wheel, and met a girl at Dragon Con, 2021, who's equally nerdy, but outshines me in every other department. But the real reason I chose to make this post is that today my, eventually, uncontested divorce was finally f***ing finalized. While I've been in a much better place mentally this last year, closing that chapter immediately sent me to the bittersweet feelings for this sub. Whether you're here frantically grasping to make sense of the initial trauma of discovery or paying it forward years later after your own recovery, know you deserve to be loved, most importantly, by yourself. I leave you with two quotes that resonated with me this last year. In some ways suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of the sacrifice. Viktor Frankl. Remember this because it will happen many times in your life. When people show you who they are the first time, believe them, Maya Angelou. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please help us grow, hit that like button. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are, 